Big movie, big movie, a lot of fun. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. But it's about more than just a movie. I think what Rhode Islanders need to understand, and I think most of us are getting the point uh, over the course of the last decade plus that we are uh, a, a, a hub now. We are a hub for uh, art. We are a hub for movie production. We're a hub for all sorts of things that would add into what has to be defined as a really, really fascinating lifestyle. Um, and given, I guess, based on the way this latest subject matter that we're going to have tonight has been covered, it looks like Rhode Island is somewhat competitively positioned uh, against an evolving economy uh, in the movie industry to compete even more. And thankfully, we have had a, a department here uh, exclusively focused on it through administrations. Uh, headed by Mr. Steve Steinberg, who you're, uh, Feinberg, which you're going to, <laughs> who you're going to meet in a second. Steinberg is my producer. Feinberg is my guest. Yeah. Let's get our act together here tonight. Um, uh, he's, he's he's one of my easiest interviews, by the way, because um, uh, Stephen and I could chat all day and all night. Uh, but he's got a lot of things to say, a lot of things to tell you, and a lot of insight to offer as to how the industry works. And so whenever he's here, I get excited about it. Now, as we're taping Thursday, I'm looking at the clock, uh, midday, I just got through listening to the Supreme Court arguments on the Colorado case. Uh, more on that on the radio over the course of the week next week. As that kind of intersects with the case of immunity that the appellate court has already decided and which is also going to be placed on the Supreme Court's docket. So my guess is that next week we'll be spending some considerable time on those particular matters. Of course, on a local basis, the 195 bridge situation seems to be um, uh, top of mind concern and understandably so for a lot of Rhode Islanders, especially the, at least previously, 96,000 vehicles that drive across it every single day. Oversight hearings are going to take place uh, with the General Assembly, parentheses, laugh out loud, uh, beginning Monday. And I say that because I, I have very little confidence the 27 members of the General Assembly are going to do anything constructive uh, in the midst of not having any answers yet. Uh, but the administration seems to be taking this in the proper fashion and saying, all right, you want it, you got it, Toyota, and they're going to make their own presentations uh, to the General Assembly uh, on the matters that I think all of us are concerned about, some of which will be redundant, some of which will be empty, some of which might cause the text to uh, to go off. You know, come on, Dan, sit your phone. All sorts of, good thing the show is casual. Um, so th those things also are, be, are will be a focus of, of the radio program and our conversations here over the next couple of days. And the reason kind of I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that I touch on some of the important matters uh, is that I just want to have some fun with Stephen and talk about what this new movie is all about and uh, to talk about the economic impact that the industry has on our great state and region. So with no further ado, some pretty high profile stars were at the State House earlier in the week, uh, or last week. Last week? Only a week? Well, within the last few days, and here's how we reported it. Thank you so much, everyone. My name is Jamie. Rhode Island is once again in the spotlight as it is the backdrop for another Hollywood film. What I need for this film is to represent America, to represent America in, in sort of the best sense possible. And, um, and we looked at a lot of places and I'm so glad we're here. 12 news cameras on Thursday captured crews working on a building on Broadway in the capital city. Steven Feinberg of the Rhode Island TV and Film Office says Providence will be where most of the movie is filmed, but that other undisclosed locations in Rhode Island will be utilized as well. And this isn't the first movie filmed in Rhode Island. Hocus Pocus 2 was most recently filmed in the Ocean State in 2021. Other previous films shot here include Kira Sedgwick's Space Oddity, starring Kevin Bacon. Actress Jamie Lee Curtis mentioned how due to a lack of opportunities in California, filming in other locations may become more common going forward. If you don't want all the revenues and all of the teamwork and work and support, for all of the parts of the movie business, if you don't want us to leave and go to places like Rhode Island, then you have to create tax incentives for the people in California, or we're going to come here every time. Yeah, 
Uh, it seems to me. She, she missed the great line. The great line was, this is how you do it. She said, Rhode in here in Rhode Island, this is how you do it. And you've been doing it. We've been doing the it. The state's been doing it. Welcome. Good 20, to see you. Thank you, Dan. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invite. And this is my 20-year anniversary. Really? Yep. A, uh, April 5th, 2004, I started. Explain to everybody how you got this gig. It was the strangest thing. I had, my buddy was, I was in L.A. I'd been in L.A. for 22 years. I'm, I'm from Cranston originally. I always made movies when I was eight years old and always dreamed about going out to California. And when I was 18, I finally did. I came back. My buddy was going through a very painful divorce in 2003. Uh, he's Italian, and I grew up with him, and he didn't want to do Christmas Eve with his family. I said, kid, I'm coming home. We're going to do Christmas Eve with the family. While I was there, his niece was dating someone in Mayor Cicilline's office. And I said, oh, who's in charge of the Providence Film Commission nowadays? And he said, oh, it doesn't exist anymore. I go, what, what do you mean it doesn't exist? He said, uh, uh, they got rid of the, they dissolved it. I go, that's a shame. I, I think Providence and Rhode Island would be a great place to make movies. And, and I said, you know. I would kick ass doing that. <laughs> so that's what I said. So he said, do you want me to uh, maybe set up a meeting uh, with the mayor while you're in town? I said, sure. I'm leaving January 7th. Sounds like a plan. So I met, not with the mayor, but his head of art, culture, and tourism, who is Cliff Wood and Lynn McCormick. And I explained to them, these are like five things I would do to uh, enhance Rhode Island for filming and all. And they said, would you be interested in being the head of the Rhode Island Film Office? And literally, my hair, it's doing it now. My hair stood up. I said, what about Rick Smith, who's been doing it for 14 years? And he would have a film here, and then five years, another film. And uh, they said, well, he quit. And they dissolved the office out of the uh, Economic Development Corporation, now the Commerce Corp. But it was saved by the Council on the Arts with basically no budget. But Randy Rosenbaum, executive director, saved the office legislatively. Would you be interested in applying for it? Let's see if it's online. It had gone online the day before for two weeks. And I, my hair stood up and I said, Newport? I'm getting chills now talking about it. And I said, yeah, I'll apply. And I had the, my, my attorney uh, is, was the chairman of ABC, Lloyd Braun, of the Seinfeld uh, he, so he wrote me a letter of recommendation, had a Panavision, Walt Disney Studios, etc. I was very qualified for the idea with no budget and hardly a salary. And I guess there were like 250 people applied. Randy, who I met just briefly and said hello to while I was in town, um, selected me above everyone else. And I moved about 39 boxes from L.A. I said, okay. I'm either making the biggest mistake of my life or it will be a good move. And I'll know in six months if they know what I'm talking about. And thankfully, uh, I say Speaker Murphy at the time was very supportive. I just met him. He understood what I was talking about. And at that time was Senate President Maltabano. And again, I knew nothing about state government. And um, we ended up, I brought the Brotherhood television pilot to Rhode Island with the hope that if it got picked up by um, Showtime, it would become a series. It became a three-season Peabody Award-winning series. And when the show went off the air, I remember the Providence Journal wrote, our series got whacked. And it, the fact that they said our series made me feel really good because it was an underbelly of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, crime and it was a cautionary tale, but they embraced it, and I think a lot of people did. But that executive at Showtime became the executive who brought the Gilded Age um, with Julian Fellows, and so that relationship I was able to take advantage of so that we would get the Gilded Age here in Rhode Island for HBO. Do you understand why I say this is the easiest interview I do? Uh, you are, no, you, you know, it's, it's a pleasure. Your energy must be contagious dealing with an industry 
that is full of personality, right? You've got to you've got to be a little bit, and I say this with as much respect as I can muster. You've got to be a little bit of a character. <laughs> I would call my aunt. <laughs> to, to deal with the characters in the industry, both on a on a talent level all the way through the executive and corporate levels, correct? Well, yes. Like my job is so multifaceted. I'll give you an example. Yesterday I was in front of the state properties committee. Well, that state properties committee is dealing with all of the legal ease, and that means contracts, uh, insurance. Um, you know, making sure that everybody signs off. And it's very detail-oriented, it's like herding cats, but it's very legal. So my job and my folks had, when I was a, a child thought, oh, maybe he'll be either a lawyer or a veterinarian or a filmmaker. And so I've had to become the lawyer. And sometimes I'll deal with our legal staff, but when we started out with these protocols back in 2004 and 2005, they had never dealt with film at all. So we were creating these legal documents and all. And it, they were asking me questions. I said, man, I should get some kind of gratis legal <laughs> degree for what we're doing. And so that's part of the job. The other part is to promote our state. The other part is, you know, how to get the Cranston Street Armory up to snuff and overseeing sprinkler systems and lead abatement and security alarms and all. Why is that project under your purview? Because that building in 2004, 2005 was essentially a junkyard. Inside there was every piece of government, I don't want to call it waste, but refuse. So when I went in there, like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, we had those giant boxes of artifacts. What was in there were old mattresses, old computers, every piece of desks and everything. It was, a, it was a wasteland. And so I looked at that saying this could be, it's, it's open, high ceilings, no poles. This could be a movie uh, stage. Right now it sits in the middle of a political limbo. No, we're using it though. We, we, we used it for underdog. And okay. it, when I brought underdog, we did all kinds of lead abatement, sprinkler system. We had to find out what okay, the... Okay, so, so you have, so while it has no ultimate definition for the future, you've accessed the asset. The, the, the film office has worked with production companies to rent it out okay. for, we did Hocus Pocus 2, we built a whole uh, forest. Now we've got the Ella McKay, uh, there's a homes, homes are being built. Underdog, we did a whole neighborhood in there and the top, the roof of the um, of the state house was built So there. this Ella McKay movie is in part being produced in the armory? Cor correct, <laughs> that's part of it, yes. So yeah. That's one of the stages is in the armory. And um, so we, we, you know, doing that. And then I'm doing locations and dealing with different personalities and, and, and education, because I love, my dad was a sixth grade teacher, my brother's a uh, educator in Coventry, um, and I had great mentors. So we do stuff with um, students. I had uh, some students um, that worked on uh, Good Burger 2. And today I was just dealing with the Rhode Island International Film Festival and planning that out. All right. Well, we, we, it feels like we have a mini Hollywood, and the truth of the matter is, it, it, we do. Uh, how we got this movie and the theme, and it doesn't matter what question I ask. We're going to get great answers here. Again. I'm excited about another new movie that's going to be filmed in Rhode Island this year. It's called Ella McKay a story about a lieutenant governor who becomes governor. And while that is a familiar story, I have been assured that it's not about yours truly. <laughs> I want to thank Rhode Island Film and Television Office Director Steve Beinberg for doing the work to attract these blockbusters, which helped put Rhode Island on the map in a big way. You know, you're, you're dangerously becoming um, so successful with you know, running one movie after the next that uh, Rallies may start taking it for granted. I mean, the first the first few successes, the breakthroughs, were holy cow, really big deals. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, we got another movie. Oh, we got another movie. And, and what's really cool about it is now that you'll see what people would consider to be major Hollywood stars, whether it be Jamie Lee Curtis or Woody Harrelson, right now with this newest movie. Or uh, for instance, I don't know if I've told the story on this on this set, but I I, I certainly have on the radio. 
a few years back, I was meeting with a friend uh, at a local hotel downtown before a PCURI game, and I look over and uh, I, I see Rebecca, you know, uh, typing away on her computer and then having a conversation. Rebecca who? Well, it's Rebecca from Ted Lasso. Yeah. It's, you know, it's uh, Hannah Waddingham. And, you know, I say, you know, I say hello, and I say hello. And, uh, and after the, after the, the meeting, I, I just walked over and said, hey, thanks. Which is, by the way, an interesting way to, to talk to celebrities because rather than oh, can I make you money? just I said, hey, thanks. And she said, for what? And I said, for for making me feel good for for, for a program that really is terrific. And she's and I spent an hour with her, yeah. And I, you know, chatting, and you know, she sent a video to my wife on the phone, which I have to show you after the show. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. My point is, is that um, it's become a cool thing that you never know who's going to be in town. Right. And that's a byproduct of the work. Well, it's nice, too, because all of a sudden, a place like uh, the Bolarama, Lang's Bolarama, had Woody Harrelson mm. there, and, and they, they put it on Instagram or whatever. Well, that, that may bring more people to their bowling alley. Yeah. How yeah. cool is that? This movie about a lieutenant governor uh, becoming a governor, um, what's the genesis of that? The well, governor suggests it's not him. No, no, no. So it's something, James L. Brooks, who, uh, his background, Mary Tyler Moore show, uh, Taxi. Broadcast um, News, one of my favorite movies Broadcast ever. News, uh, Terms of Endearment, as good as it gets, executive producer of The Simpsons. He's 83 years young and spry as can be. Uh, I call him legend when I see him. So he came up with this this script for uh, Ellen McKay about this, um, and it takes place, I think, in the 90s, um, about this young lieutenant governor female who's having some issues at home and challenges in the work uh, workforce, uh, and trying to find out if she's a good fit for, for, if she's good enough. And the governor, played by Albert Brooks, who's loved, is leaving uh, state service for the federal government and it's an opportunity for her to take that step forward and the question is is the are the citizens ready for her is she ready for the task at hand and it's a very American type of story about ideas and um, no state defined so it's, no state it, defined as a matter of fact I was looking at the license plate we were filming yesterday uh, on the east side and the license plate and I'm like it kind of looks like the Keystone State color of the, I'm looking at it, and I get closer, and it's like DeVarnay something. It's like Latin. It's, it's like a Latin state. And so it's not, It's it looks like a real license plate, but the it's a jumbled plate. Valor is our name. How long will they shoot here? And are they shooting here exclusively? Yes. So they, start, they started filming uh, February the 5th, uh, Monday. And they go until towards the middle to end of April. They'll be filming at the State House. Um, they'll be filming, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the Armory. And it's mostly a Providence-centric uh, location. But it, as you said, it's an unnamed. And then one more uh, city or town. Right. When we come back, we only have a few minutes, but I, I want to talk about the business of, of, of setting these movies up. Stay with us. So again, the cast of uh, Ellen McKay coming out to the State House for a press conference is Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Woody Harrelson. Uh, Steve Feinberg is the executive director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office, which is a very significant office now. Uh, you might have said 20 years ago, why are we doing that? I think the proof's in the pudding. Um, structurally, some short answers here, if you can. Um, what is the, what's the financial transaction with Rhode Island for a movie like this or any of these movies? It's I'm sure they all are different, but right. So what's every, the protocol? So, how, so it's a Hollywood film. That you have to, to use our incentive program, you have to spend a minimum of $100,000. So that allows for like first-time filmmakers, independent filmmakers, to access our program. They get a 30% credit on qualified expenditures, which is money spent on the ground in Rhode Island primarily. Um, uh, we also have qualified vendors. So the you have credit to, is against what? Expenditures. Uh, spent on the ground in Rhode Island using a qualified vendor. The credit or, from the, off their taxes. 
Yes, it becomes a they get a they get a state tax uh, credit, which is a liability. You know, they have, and they can use it over because three you're years. Because employing people in the state. Correct. So, so it's like a coupon. So the expense of, of of employing people and all the things that would be taxable has a credit against the tax bill. And they're paying those taxes and all. So if you have a if you have Dan York, you you let's say you funded a film, you funded your your child's film, they're directing a film, mm. and you spend $100,000 of qualified expenditures, you would get a $30,000 state tax credit so you can use over a three-year period to offset your taxes, but also offset your investment on that film. Uh, for a Hollywood production, those are millions and millions of dollars, they would get, let's say it's a, uh, you know, Let's say it's a million dollar film, but it's a lot more than that. They'd get $300,000. Well, the company in Los Angeles doesn't need that, so they will sell that to some Rhode Island residents at a depreciation. So maybe they'll get 94 cents on the dollar, and then the Rhode Islanders can use that tax credit. Yeah, it, 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 that, that's just a system that people really don't don't necessarily understand. But Your accountant, uh, your accountant, if you said right. to your accountant, I'd like to use a, are there any tax credits available? Your accountant would know. And I guess I only have a 30, I only have a 30 second window here, but Jimmy the Curtis made a point. Hey, if, uh, if Hollywood and or California doesn't get it, Rhode Island does. Cool. As short an answer as you can give me, what's the difference between the two places? Well, uh, California does have a program. Um, but I will say this, for every $1 we give in a tax credit returns $5.44 of economic activity. And our, com our, our, our program is more competitive. Yes, yes. But we have a cap at how many productions we can do per calendar year. Con Massachusetts have followed us. Um, they have no cap. They can bring as many productions. Connecticut have followed us. We were one of the first in the Should country. Should we remove the cap? Yes. Is that something you're trying to get done in the general yes, assembly? I, yes, and the sunset date because these other states don't have sunset dates, which promote What's more our infrastructure. Sunset date? 2027. But when you don't have a sunset date, it promotes infrastructure building. All right. We need to see the business of this. Uh, come on the radio in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'll let you all know. We'll talk more about the business of this. Congratulations. Thank you so much. On 20 years, and on this, and on this particular project. 20 years of love. Final word, and we come back. <laughs> You know, we, we tend to be a little self-deprecating around here, and sometimes we take some things for granted. But uh, I think we are getting the point here that we are kind of a mini Hollywood, and it's one movie after the next. And uh, it's a vital part of our economy and industry. It's, it's progress. It's a good thing. Nice to be positive about things, don't you think? Have a great week.